So today we begin this five-part series talking about hashtag struggles. Now when I talked about this in the first service, I gave a little education lesson on hashtag and everyone looked at me like I was crazy. They had no idea what I was talking about. Or pound sign or number sign or as I was so rudely reminded by the almost the entire choir, sharp sign. So all use the same hashtag. Um, and there is a question about where the hashtag came from. They, it's always been presumed that hashtag was part of Twitter, but Twitter, the people that designed Twitter actually didn't come up with the idea. It just kind of appeared there one day. And what they think happened, and they're pretty sure happened, was when Sully landed the jet on the Hudson River. You know what I'm talking about? That was actually flight number 1549. And somebody put on their hashtag flight 1549 in the Hudson River. And there was so much excitement it generated about it that pretty soon it was just hashtag 1549. And from that point on, it spread uh, throughout the throughout Twitter, first of all, but it grew from Twitter into all the different areas that you can go into. Right now, if you push, if you Google hashtag F-U-M-C-P-O, that will lead you to every comment any of us have ever made that we've added that hashtag. The point of the hashtag is a way to talk about a similar subject within social media. So when 1549 came down, everybody was so excited that everyone was all right and they just kept on putting hashtag 1549, praise God, and things like that, and that's how it grew. And that's how we get to uh, relate to one another. Now, our topic for this month is hashtag struggles. And it's talking about the fact that we have similar struggles that we all go through in life. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't even have to ask for it. Thank you, Brittany. My hope is that we can look at these different struggles and find God's plan for each of us in each of them. But also to speak a little bit into the good side and the dangers of social media that's upon us today. So here we go with hashtag struggles. The struggles we face, and we are going to talk about this week, contentment. Then we're going to follow with intimacy, authentic authenticity, if you can say that, compassion, and rest the following weeks. So today, let's begin with contentment. How do we go from discontentment or envy, and sometimes discontentment and envy, to contentment in Christ? which is where we can find peace. I, I like to use my dad's passing uh, as a kind of a marker to how things have changed so rapidly. My dad died in 1992 and I was carrying a bag phone as the coolest uh, coolest cell phone that was out there at the time. He had a great big bag that was the size of a lunchbox and carried that around. And fax at that in 1992 was the number one way that we communicated with each other. I'll fax that to you. I'll fax that to you. We thought we were so cool then. Uh, it was really what the way we communicated. The term PDA or a Palm Pilot was just introduced. And email in the mainstream, in the real mainstream, was still three miles away, three years away. And I even had to look up, it's been so long, I had to look up what PDA stood for. I couldn't remember. It's Personal Digital Assistant. That's what we had in our hands. And they were about an inch thick and we just, we were the hot items when we had one of those. About three years after that, you could actually do you could do email on them. And we were just getting amazing, amazing. At the same time, Yahoo was not yet launched. Google, Amazon, or eBay. In fact, the internet was just coming out of the academia slash military usages and coming into mainstream. But look where we are today. We have more at our fingertips than ever. But here's the thing. And we have more discontentment than ever. Where is that coming from? Something is not right. Let's pray. God of grace and glory, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the way that you step into our lives in most unexpected places. Help us to hear your struggles today, hear, for you to hear our struggles today and to resolve what we would consider important things in our lives. 
through you and only through you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, as we saw from the uh, clip this morning, social media has opened us up to an amazing ability to check in on people. The problem is, most of the time when we do that, what we check in on, what people put on Facebook, is the good stuff. I, I like to liken it to, um, used to be once a year, there was this letter that went out at Christmas time, where we sent our Christmas letter. Remember, you always typed it single space because you had so much to say and you sent it to everybody. Only the thing is, 99% of the time when we sent something in that Christmas letter, it was the good stuff, right? We didn't talk about, oh, you know what, I bounced a check last week or anything like that. And, and so once a year we would get that piece. Now, with Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, you fill in the blank, we have it daily. We are barraged with the good stuff. Every day, people showing us uh, selfies of themselves and, and new people that they're friends with and new places. You remember when uh, the campaigns were going out and people would, they wouldn't even talk to the campaigners. They would only get a picture with them instead of look them in the eye kind of thing. And, and, and if you get a new car, man, you got to get that on Facebook right away. And the one that mystifies me the most is this idea of putting the food you're about to eat <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm talking about. It always looks so beautiful. You know, and so I'm, I'm looking at these pictures, and meanwhile, I've just, they have a new car, but I've just backed my car into somebody. I didn't take a selfie of that. Or, or if I'm about to sit down and eat something that is marginally safe to eat because it's been in the refrigerator forever and it has none of that fancy sprig of something on it. You know what I'm talking about? So what does that do? That creates discontent. I didn't have that food. I didn't have that. I wasn't invited to that party where they were all at. And, and by the way, our two cars together are edging up on 300,000 miles. So don't have the new car either. And so you could be really discontent. And, and we can live that. We used to say the grass is greener on the other side. But now through Instagram, through Facebook, through Snapchat, through all of these different things that are out there, 24-7, we get in full color. The grass is greener on the other side. Amen? And we're discontent. We're discontent because of what others have or what it seems to have. Comparing our lives leads to discontent and envy. So when we start comparing with somebody else, that's what happens. Now this discontentment is not something new. It's been around forever. It's been around since Exodus 15 when God had just delivered the Israelites. The Israelites were slaves in Egypt and they were having to move, start, they were having to live this horrible life and the Pharaoh was giving it to them. You know, they were just under the pressure of the man. And they get out finally. They cross the Red Sea in Exodus 15, 22 through 24 is right after they cross. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea. And they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they were, went three days in the wilderness and found no water. So the people grumbled at Moses saying, what shall we drink? Okay, three days. They've been, in, they've been in captivity. They've been held. They've been, their kids are killed. They're, all these different things have happened. And three days up across the river, we have no water. What are we to do? So they were discontent. And the scripture continues that way. All the way through our scriptural account of our faith and our walk, we find that God delivers us and we complain about it. Amen? Yeah, it's the truth. Come on, amen? Yeah, you better own it. There you go. The con this, and so in James 3.14, 3, it talks about this a little bit. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but it is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. Wait a second. This stuff that everybody else has 
is not leading to God. It is leading to disorder. It's leading to earthly stuff, not to heavenly stuff. It, we, and we get pulled deeper and deeper in on social media. Amen?